Christina now Questions now from the party leaders. Leader of the UKIP group, Neil Hamilton. Uh, whilst the uh, First Minister was away last week, uh, he may have seen that the Cabinet Secretary of Finance wrote to the Chancellor of Exchequer uh, about uh, proposed public spending cuts in two or three years' time, which said to amount to three and a half billion pounds. Um, the government this year is running a budget deficit equivalent to 60 billion pounds, and George Osborne managed the singular achievement of borrowing twice as much money in six years as uh, Gordon Brown uh, and, uh, and uh, Alistair Darling. And the national debt is now 1,800 billion compared with 1,200 billion six years ago. That's 28,000 pounds for every person in Wales, indeed the United Kingdom. Um, it's very easy to spend money we haven't got, of course, uh, and everybody would like to be able to borrow interminably and never to have to pay it back. By how much does he think the government's borrowing requirement should increase on uh, a permanent basis? Strong case indeed for borrowing now to invest for the future. It's never been cheaper to borrow money on the world markets. Uh, we know uh, from the experience after the end of the Second World War, when the UK was in a far worse position than it is now financially, that the government of the day took the, uh, the position that it would seek to uh, to borrow money in order to invest for the future and then we saw of course the economic growth of the uh, 50s and indeed uh, 1960s so to my I, mean, I, I am unashamedly Keynesian in this regard I take the view that government should be borrowing now in order to invest in order to create the income that will pay back the cost of that borrowing and more in the future yeah but the first minister knows that never happens <coughs> and he has, any, he has only to look <coughs> at the uh, recent history of the UK government's uh, debt position to see what is the reality. We, we have a Wellbeing of Future Generations Act in Wales, a very good thing it is too. But what we're doing by carrying on this rake's progress of borrowing, of course, is to hand on to the next generation a massive debt which they will have to repay. I don't think that's a terribly moral position for us to hold. But there's a better solution to this. We don't have to borrow that money at all. We can look at what the government spends money on at the moment and cut without any risk to anybody in Britain being disadvantaged. Let's just take the foreign aid budget, for example, on which we're spending £12 billion this year. If we just knocked £3.5 billion off that £12 billion, <coughs> that would amount to the same sort of saving that the Cabinet Secretary for Finance wants the Chancellor of the Exchequer to, to uh, avoid deducting from the Welsh Government's budget and there are plenty of reasons why we should cut the foreign aid budget so is the first minister putting the interests of people in foreign countries before the interests of the people of Wales well, I think the the leader of UKIP is being is being naive in what he says I mean first of all there is the obvious moral question uh, of uh, those countries that are rich helping those countries that are poor the example of Norway is a prime example of that the Norway grants was set up by the Norwegian government because they felt they'd, they'd done very well at oil and gas and wanted to give something back to people who had less. So that altruism and that desire to help humanity is hugely strong. But also, if we look at it economically, aid buys friends and allies. And if you don't provide aid to countries in order to help them and they will, they will remain your friend in the future, someone else will do it. And so, yes, it's right to say that there is a strong moral case for aid, but from, in diplomatic terms, it's also correct to say that if you uh, offer aid to countries that grow in the future, they will remain your friends and will trade with you in the future, increasing the, uh, the wealth of their own people and, of course, buying the goods that you manufacture. Of course, there is a humanitarian case for aid, and nobody is against that. But a lot of our, our aid budget actually goes to countries that are spending a huge amount of, uh, of money upon projects that we wouldn't regard for a moment as humanitarian. For example, we're increasing our aid to Pakistan this year by 100 million pounds to nearly 450 billion pounds, a million pounds a year. And Pakistan this year is increasing its defense budget by 635 million to 6.7 billion. They spend far more per capita on defense than we do in the United Kingdom. They've also got a nuclear program and a space program. And so what we're in, in effect doing by increasing the amount of aid that we're giving to Pakistan is indirectly to fund their military, space and nuclear budgets. Well, he uses one example. There are many, many other examples of countries where people have suffered greatly, a lot of it due to the ineptitude of the European powers who left those countries with artificial boundaries uh, uh, and with economic incoherence, who left those countries without a tradition of governance and they were left to uh, struggle as a result of it. Many of those countries now have good governance. If we look at Ghana, for example, 
Ghana as a country is, is a country where governance is robust, yet many of the people there are paying for the mistakes that were made in the 1960s after, after independence. I see nothing wrong in providing aid to people in order to enable them to survive, of course, but in order to enable people to, uh, to develop themselves uh, economically and, of course, to enable those people then to provide for their families. I was in Uganda two years ago. The one thing that struck me about Uganda was the sheer entrepreneurial spirit of the people. What they didn't have was capital. Yeah. Coffee was the main cash crop. They saved money from coffee in order to provide themselves with capital. They had no other way of doing it. The great thing that had happened in Uganda was banking via mobile phones. People could transfer money around in a way they couldn't do before. For many, many people around the world, they just need a bit of help in order to prosper. And that's why we give aid to people in order to make sure that they can prosper in the future and their communities can prosper in the future.